Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Removal Sanity. Apologies for the clickbait title, but there is a discussion that needs to be had. Actually, maybe a mini rant if I'm being honest. I'm not really one for rants, as they don't actually serve any purpose than to let off some steam for the person ranting, and are generally unhelpful. However, I will make an exception today, as this topic is something that we all need to grapple with at one point in our lives. Is accessibility in gaming needed? 100% yes forget being a decent human being and think of all the other gamers out there with some disabilities this could benefit there is an equally a big and important reason you see i hate to break it to you but you are going to get old and if you want to keep enjoying games when you are old you'll need accessibility options to be mainstream and as regular as the options menu itself your eyesight will get poorer, your grip will lessen, and through the course of time, other things that you may not even think about will deteriorate. It will be at that point you will thank your lucky stars for those options available. So even if it's for your own selfish reasons, you should be championing accessibility in gaming. And this is where my biggest gripe for accessibility comes into play. What's one of the biggest and easiest ways to help this become more mainstream? By talking about it when the games themselves are reviewed. Sorry gamers, I lulled you into a false sense of security there, but this particular rant isn't about you, but those that review said games, mainstream or independent. But it would be super helpful if some of you, when accessibility was mentioned, didn't get into a bit of a toxic throth about it. No, my issue comes with reviewers in general, and at best the limited amount of reviews I see even talking about accessibility. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not tarring all here, there are some out there that go out of their way to ensure it's brought up, but at least from where I'm sitting, the vast majority barely touch the subject at all. Speaking to those that review games professionally and independent, one of the biggest reasons I hear is, I don't know where to start, or I don't know what to look for, and in fairness to them, it can be hard and overwhelming. Plus, let's be honest, the topic can be a minefield in terms of what to look out for and what some disabilities even look like, let alone understand them. As someone who only myself has just started due to the same issues, I know I will make mistakes, but if I don't start now, when will I? Also, it really shouldn't stop you from researching when the power of the internet is at your fingers. There is a huge amount of information out there and sifting through some of it will take some time. So I do appreciate that people are excessively busy at the moment and this can be put on the back burner. Well, no fear, this small independent reviewer with the help of the internet and an accessibility ambassador for Xbox has something not only will help you get started, but should help you put in place accessibility template for future reviews. With the help of Cerebral Paul, I have created a very basic accessibility guide for all reviewers to use, modify, share and expand for free. In this video's description I have left a link to my Google Drive which you can enter and copy said guide for you to use how you see fit. This way it should at the very least kill the biggest issues often brought up by those who review face when talking about the subject. And for those that are going to use the argument, well I'm just a small reviewer stroke channel and this is more for the mainstream, I have a counter for that too. If a 400 plus sub channel like myself can take the time and effort to make it a staple part of their reviews, so can you. 
Will it mean a little more time when doing reviews? Yes, but in the long run, this will be worth it, not only for your future self, but others all around the world. So please, I ask you to share this, not for the views, though it will help, but to get this resource into the hands of as many reviewers as possible, so that a real change can occur for all, including yourself. Well, that's it. Thank you for putting up with grumpy little old me, and I hope you all have a great time gaming. May your health bar be large, the checkpoints plentiful, and your adventures memorable as you take on any challenges you face. But before that, I will leave you with Cerebral Paul, an absolute advert for accessibility. I would like you to listen to him and how accessibility affects him in gaming. Hi everybody, my name is Rubel Paul. I happen to be somebody who is a gamer who was born with a disability. The disability does not define me, but it does limit how well I can play the game. So one of the things I try to do in my streams is I talk about accessibility and representation in the gaming place. And uh, I show people the issues I have and what I have to do to overcome them. And hopefully in doing so, I also make people laugh and enjoy themselves and maybe educate themselves a little bit on how accessibility in gaming is a very important thing because gaming, the population, the accessibility side, there are a lot of us that identify as disabled, either physically, mentally, or you know we have visual issues or a little bit of everything in some cases. So we have to talk about all those things to bring it out to the forefront. I've been gaming for a very long time and things have gotten better over the last five to 10 years or so. But all the time I was growing up, I was very limited in the games I could play and the things I could do. That's changing, and that's what I want to focus on in my streams. And I think that's an important thing to focus on for the industry as well. Thank you for your time.